Greetings from the South Fork Eel River, everyone. So we're right on the edge, and there's this brush here that's uh, just stuff that got uh, brought in by the high water last week. And over here, I found a little scrape, and this little scrape was made by a river otter. So I followed the tracks backwards, and you can see some of them here. And I'll uh, use a stick to point them out. Let's see, this is an otter track right here. And here's another otter track. And that one. And heading back here. So the otter got out of the water down there. Somewhere underneath that, br that uh, branch back there. Crawled under or over this direction. And came through here. And this is maybe uh, 10, 12 inches tall. So, you see his tracks in here, coming through here. Now, I know there were two otters because further up, these trails separated into two. But, they came through here, after leaving the water. I don't know if you can see the water through there, but the water is back there. So, they just came through this, this accumulated uh, um, debris that's, that's left here. And you can see their tracks here. Coming through. Made a little scrape right here. And headed up there. And at the time that they did this, the water was higher. So, one otter went right here. This direction. And you can see the other trail right here. See the tracks? Right there and here. And this otter went underneath this branch. So that's maybe 10 inches tall. And see his tracks right here, and here, and up there. So the second otter went up this way. And you can see the tracks heading along over to that brush. Now why do otters do this? Well, otters come out of the water to scent mark, and this scrape right here, which I kind of messed up, um, is one of the things that they do. They'll scrape on the sand, and they'll often leave their scats here as a way of marking. So they come out of the water, do some marking. They'll also roll in the sand because the sand helps to maintain the their fur. It helps to get the the waterproofing, the oil spread on their fur. So they'll roll around in the sand and maintain their fur. And they might also use a place like this as a resting place because it's pretty dense under there. But if you look around, it's sheltered. It's a very sheltered spot. They could come underneath this debris and hang out under here, and uh, raptors can't see them, and other predators can't see them. They don't have that many predators anyway, but, you know, they don't want to be exposing themselves. So, they can come out of the water and rest, and just relax in a place like this. People don't see them, and other animals don't see them. Maintain their fur, and then they head back to the water. So, it's not that far from the water. Although a couple days ago the water was a lot higher. So they went back in and then swam on and did their thing. But it's kind of cool to follow otters around because you can see how they use scent marking and, and uh, how they come out of the water and, and do various activities out here and then they head back to their environment. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, look for otter tracks wherever you are out near water. Um, five toes on an otter track. And size-wise, let me get the ruler here, they're not huge, they're not really big animals. So, three inches is a good length for an otter track, maybe approximately that wide. But this is a hind track, you can tell because this toe is further back in the track, it's heading that direction, but this toe is further back in the track than these other toes. These other four toes are grouped together, and if you were to cover that toe up, the other four toes would look very symmetrical and lined up neatly, almost like a canine track would be. So, put a line there and put a line there and line them up this way, and they're, they're very symmetrical. But, if you include this toe, this toe makes it look very asymmetrical. You can't cover that toe and make it look, look uh, any better as far as symmetry. So, this is toe number one, or the inner toe, which is equivalent to your thumb or your big toe. So, toe 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. This toe being further back makes this the hind track. 
and the inside, this toe being the inside or equivalent to your big toe, tells you this is the left hind track of a river otter. So just something to look for. I don't find any really good front tracks out here, otherwise I would show you that too, but the front track's kind of messed up right here. So I backtracked those two otters and found where they got out of the water. One went that way, one went up here, and into this brush, and then all the way over, probably about 50 feet, underneath the brush to where we were before. So, let's look at these tracks. So here are a couple of otter tracks. You have the front track here, and you have the hind track here. So again, look for that dropped inner toe, toe one, two, three, four, and five. This is the right hind track. It's on top of a right front. The front isn't very clear because of the substrate here. There's one coming down, and then there's this pair, which is the left front here and the left hind on top of it. So a lot of times when otters walk, their hind foot will land right on top of that front foot, so you don't get a really good clear front track. But you can see some details here. So there's their size. So this right here is toe number one of the front track. Two, three, four, and five. The pad is obscured, but you can see toe one, two, three, four, and five on the hind track. Compare the position of this toe with the position of that toe. So remember we could cover up that toe and make the overall rest of this track look very dog-like or canine-like. I'm just going to cover the toe here. But see how they're very symmetrically lined up? But when you uncover that toe and realize this is the complete foot, it's not as symmetrical. So your front track is way more symmetrical in that if you were to cut a line straight down the center of it, the left and right sides would be closer to a mirror image of each other. That's because this toe is further ahead in the track than the, that equivalent toe on the hind foot. So the front foot is way more symmetrical if you just cut it in half and look at mirror images. If you look at a mirror image of this, this toe really throws things off. So that's an overlapping set of left tracks from a river otter. And down here we have the right tracks. Pretty cool, huh? Here's another set. None of these are great as far as like showing the details, but here's the hind. Inner toe. Let me turn this so you can see it better. So, toe one, two, three, four, and five. There's the hind track. And here's your front track. You can't see toe Till one, two, three, four, and five are there, but you can't see the other one. So there's just a little introduction to river otter tracks. Let's check out this one. So this one's kind of cool. This one does not show the inner toe. And that happens sometimes. So sometimes you only see four toes on an otter track. Now how can we tell this is an otter track? So look at this pad here. And notice the shape. It has a large pad there, a pad here that is shared by toes three, three and four. This is toe five. And then this pad here that goes, slopes downward. So this toe didn't imprint here. It's missing. But this is a left, a left hind, I believe. And you can tell it's an otter track because these toes are a lot wider than the toes of a raccoon track and they have these claw marks. So in this case, the claws went into the sand. They went in like that. So there's really not a very prominent claw mark, but they're still there. You can see them if I zoom in. And then this pad shape right here clues you in that this is an otter track because of that distinctive shape. On a raccoon, it's more C-shaped. So there you go. Right over here you have a gray fox sharing the river bar with a, an otter. So they were both up here when the water was higher and the otters moved along here and the gray fox went that way. Just another species that lives out here. 
and the otters and the fox both went that way underneath that brush. So here's our two otters heading uh, upstream. This one and this one, they're both heading that direction along the river bar here. And up here they go back into the water. So here's one of the otters and it's heading back towards the water there. You can see the water was up to there when it was here. So these tracks are in the gate pattern that otters usually use, which is a lope with a front and a hind and a front and a hind heading in that direction. So here's your front track. Let's look at it. So this is the left front track. Got your inner toe, two, three, four, and five. Pretty round in appearance, very symmetrical, as opposed to this hind track, which has that drop toe. And asymmetrical appearance, especially if you were to discount that, you would see that that's a hind foot as opposed to a front foot because of that drop toe. Now here is the right front next to the left hind. And the right hind heading that way. So otters do use this gate to cover a lot of ground, and uh, it's called a lope. One to one, or three by four, is what it's called, and that's because the tracks are grouped as one, two, and one. So that's why it's called that. There's an airborne phase in between them, which is that space. Then they hit the ground again, and off they go. So there's your river otter traps. This is just one of the ones that we were following back there. There's the size of the front track. And here's the size of the hind track. Just so you can compare. And I hope you've enjoyed tracking these river otters right here along the Eel River. Which is great habitat for them.